You know, I know that we all have varying issues of body pain and, and dysfunction, but did you ever consider that it might be coming from your feet? Think about all the accidents and the injuries and the surgeries and the whiplash that you've had, the child that you delivered, the child that you carried on your hip for years, um, high heel shoes, running, bad form. <clears throat> so all of that chaos gets transferred throughout the body and down into your feet. And your feet ideally are really mobile, but because we wear shoes all the time, they get stuck in shoes and they get stiff. And that stillness creates joint compression and it creates fluid that doesn't move through the body very well. So I wanted to share with you three simple steps to ease foot pain. And they're just so simple and so easy. But what's wonderful about it is that when your feet are healthier, you're also having healthier knees and hips, and low back, your spine, your shoulders, your neck, everything from from toe to top becomes healthier. So I have just three little tricks that I'm gonna share with you. You're gonna need a, ideally a tennis ball. I think that's a really good tool to use because it's a little bit soft. You know, it gives underneath my hands, under the pressure of my hands. It's also a really nice shape to put underneath your foot. It feels really good. So I'm gonna show you three things. The first one is an assessment. The second one is a stretch. And the other one is a movement. And I'm going to ask you to assess the health of your foot because when you have pain in your body, assessing actually helps you to open the doorway to healing. When you're assessing, you're connecting the mind and the body, and you're just giving yourself permission to do what you need to do to feel better. And after you've done the treatment, we'll reassess, and then you really will strengthen that mind to body connection. And it helps your mind understand that it doesn't have to worry about your pain. So it starts to help you heal. It sounds really simple. And you know what? It really is. All right. So I'm going to change the position of my camera and we're going to do this together. Okay. So I know like a lot of you, many people are not too happy with the way their feet look. And I am one of those people not too excited about my feet. I'm going to ask you to stand without any judgment uh, with your feet about hip distance apart. So they're right underneath my hip sockets and my toes are pointing straight ahead and the tops of my toes are even. In other words, I don't want um, my right foot to be staggered in front of my left. Your hands are going to be by your side and your eye gaze is going to look right across the room. And you're welcome to close your eyes for this, but if you feel a little bit uncertain about your balance, I would keep them open. <clears throat> so from here, I'm gonna ask you to just think about your body weight and your feet. Just notice if one foot feels like it's heavier and to the floor than the other foot. Notice that there's a place on the bottom of your foot that gets a little bit of attention from you. Maybe it's your heel or maybe it's your big toe, you know, a place where you're kind of pressing a little bit of body weight right there on your foot. Think about whether or not you're stepping on the outside of your foot, that's supination, or the inside of your foot and pronation. So all of that creates imbalances that translate up through the rest of your body. And so when we can have a more neutral foot, we can actually improve the health of the joints of the rest of our body. So that will be our very simple assessment. And I've taken that nice tennis ball and placed that in front of my right foot. And I'm going to place my ball of foot on top of the tennis ball and I'm gonna let my heel stay into the floor. So it looks something like that. Now, if you're not comfortable doing this standing, by all means, you can sit to do it. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on my right foot. I'm just allowing the top of my foot to get a nice stretch. And if you're sitting, you can do this too. And you can even add a little bit of weight on your right thigh and that will push down a little heavier on the ball if you prefer. This is a very passive stretch. I'm just allowing the joints of my body, uh, of my foot to change their position. This will allow them to receive fresh fluid through the fascial system but I'm also ultimately gonna improve fluid flow in my circulatory system and my lymphatic system. You'll notice I'm not bouncing, I'm not moving my foot, I'm just holding it here for about 30 seconds or so. And then I'm gonna ask you, ask you to ease the weight off of your foot and just move the ball a little bit over. I've just moved it to the left. So it's right underneath the knuckle of my big toe. 
I'm just gonna press there and just take a couple of nice focused breaths. I'm not doing anything special. I'm just allowing it to stretch over the top of the foot. And then I'll just ease off and I'll do the same thing, moving the ball a little bit over towards the pinky toe. And again, when we wear shoes, we end up keeping our foot relatively um, quiet, but when we were born, our toes had as much malleability as our fingers, but we lose that as we uh, spend our life in shoes. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and do something called friction from here, and I'm going to let my foot scribble on top of the ball, and I want my thigh to shake when I do that, and that's going to pull fluid up into the fascial system which is a whole body network of very fine tubes that have water uh, and other types of cells in them. But the water nourishes um, the muscle system of the body. It wraps around all of your organs. It kind of keeps you juicy. And as we get older, the system dries out, but it's a renewable system. So we can go ahead and add a little bit of fresh fluid to that system. So I'm gonna just take that ball in front of me and I'll settle my feet back down onto the floor. And if you've done this with me, maybe you notice that there's a little bit more body weight here on the right side. And maybe you'll notice the big toe, the ball, the foot, the side of the foot and heel have a better touch against the floor. And so right away, I'm gonna to start to improve my balance. And that's something that's a huge concern for all of us as we get a little bit older. Uh, it's one of those things that doesn't improve with age, unfortunately. But what a simple thing to do to just give yourself a little bit of a treat for your feet. Just give them a chance to have a different change of shape and send a little bit of fresh fluid into the system. So you could go ahead and do this on the left side. I'm just going to continue with my right foot so that this video stays relatively short. And I'm going to bring that ball back underneath for this is going to be step three of my three simple steps to ease your foot pain. And what I want to do is let the ball go underneath the ball of my foot where I have a naturally occurring arch. It's a tiny little arch that comes from the big toe across the ball of the foot to the pinky toe. And I'm just letting my foot drape over the ball just like you had it before. And this time I'm going to squeeze the ball with my toes and then I'm going to lift my toes up. So I'm gonna squeeze and lift and just do that one or two more times for me. Again, we're just mobilizing, we're moving the toes. <clears throat> and then one more time, because they get stuck in shoes all the time, but we really want them to be able to move. And on this last one, just with your toes kind of curled down towards the ball, I want you to notice if you can see the knuckles of your toes. And ideally you can see there's the white knuckle pushing up against the surface of your foot. And if you notice that, then you do not probably have inflammation in your foot. But if it feels like the foot is kind of puffy and it looks like you can't see the knuckles, then you do probably have inflammation in your foot. And frankly, that inflammation is in your gut as well. And inflammation is, well, it causes pain for sure, but also long-term inflammation can really wreak havoc with your health and it is related to a lot of age-related illnesses like um, Alzheimer's and dementia and strokes and cardiovascular disease and even some kinds of cancer. And proactive self-care like we've just done with these three simple steps is often kind of not that interesting to people. But if we had a crystal ball and you could see that in your future you would potentially have a stroke or a heart attack, I mean, wouldn't you do whatever you need to do to just keep yourself happy and healthy for a long time. I just care about you deeply. And I just want you to know that, you know, I've got all kinds of little tips and tricks. And if you feel like you're ready to learn more, then you're welcome to schedule a phone call with me. I'd be happy to talk to you about that. I have a really fun little class that's going to be coming up. I'm calling it a mini retreat for your feet. And it's just a great way to treat not only your feet, but your whole body. So why don't you schedule that call and, and we, we can just talk. Maybe you've been wanting to get out and play golf and, and you just haven't felt like you've been mobile enough to do that. You have too much pain or you know, you're trying to play with your grandchildren or you're planning a vacation and you're worried uh, that you're not gonna be able to enjoy it because you've got pain. 
we have a lot of things that we can talk about that can really go a long way to helping you ease some of your discomforts. And ask me how I know. I was a very busy fitness instructor and I had chronic plantar fasciitis uh, for years. And it was really from poor body mechanics. I was doing it to myself. So once I realized that, I just learned how to do these simple little things that keep me from going to a chiropractor or physical therapist. I don't have to take any uh, pain medications and I can just live my life. So that's what I want for you too. So three simple steps, just assess, and then you're going to stretch and then you're going to move. And what we're doing is really moving the inflammation out of your foot and let it circulate through the lymph and then ultimately be released from the body. So I'm wishing lots of well and uh, happy feet.